Hi everybody, welcome back to Surviving a Creative Life. Here is Michelle, minus her makeup, with her hair only brushed, and her arm wrapped with uh, an ice pack, because I am two days post-surgery for carpal tunnel syndrome um, on the right hand. Next, less than two weeks, it's the left hand. So where does that leave me? right? I'm a creative person. I create what happens when the hands go bye-bye. It's not a particularly fun topic, right? But this is not the first time I've been through this. Um, artist hands. I always say I, I have artist hands. Um, so I'm very used to like doing things with one hand. But I'm in a quick, this decent bit of pain with the my fingers are moving pretty good today. They're still orange if, like, th this looks strange and color unbalanced of somehow. That's because my fingers are still orange compared to the other ones, which are not orange. <laughs> and that's because I can't wash them for a couple of days. A couple more days I can't wash this hand. And I'm going to take the bandage off, then I'll be able to wash everything. Um, but I was in a lot of pain yesterday, and so I sat around most of the day and watched television while not doing anything else. Um, that's not really me. I watch television, I would say, plenty of times. I like to watch things over and over again. I'm one of those people. But most of the time they're on in the background and I'm doing something else. I'm a creative person. I make a lot of different kinds of things. Um, I think a lot of people get astounded by how much I do. Basically, I think I'm a, just a maker. I'm somebody who it's how I deal with my anxiety, a part of it, is I take my hands and keep them busy. I do something with them. Um, but it has to be something creative. It has to be something tactile. So I've decided I'm going to attempt to do a pour painting today left-handed, which is not my dominant hand, um, for obvious reasons. Um, but I am going to try to... Um, do a very good job of it. I think this is going to be an interesting painting. My parents, uh, when I was growing up, tried to teach me to be ambidextrous, and that means I can do actually quite a lot of things with my left hand. I'm very fortunate. I am not ambidextrous, though. I cannot do everything with my left hand. But um, I will, if you see, there's my poor um, uh, setup behind me here, and I'm going to go over there, and I'm going to um, pour on something today, and I'm going to put a uh, glove on this and wrap it up so it doesn't get messed up. I'm going to take the ice off at some point. That's when I'm going to start this. And um, we'll see how well I can do. Essentially with one hand. <laughs> Come, laugh along with me because this is bound to be amusing. <laughs> hey everybody. Okay, I said I was going to be back uh, with a paint. Pour even with my... Uh, two days post-op carpal tunnel hand. Uh, I'm going to mix the paints and we'll see what happens from there. I mixed a bunch of paints before the surgery so that I would be able to do this without too much problems with my injured hand and the fact that two weeks later I'm having the other one done. So once I finish um, putting the paints in the dirty pour um, I'm going to take off this ice pack and put a glove on this hand and we'll see how we do this with my owie fingers and my owie hand today. But we're going to do this because when the going gets tough, the tough make art. Alright, so this is my dirty cup. I'm going to reuse one. Um, it's already got my little uh, pour, pour spout in there. And... Um, I'm going to start with white. I'm going to actually try to pour on this today, which I found looking for something else yesterday. This is an aluminum um, tray of some kind. I would think it probably came with catering, um, but it has this really intricate design on it. Flowers and little dotted lines and leaves and things. And I thought it might be really interesting to pour on this and then see if we can mm, get the skin off of it with this design on it. So that's my experiment for the day. So I think I'm going to pour on this side first. I was originally thinking about pouring on this side, 
but I changed my mind because I'm a woman and that's my prerogative. Okay, so pouring the paint. First, here's my paint. I have no problem repouring like, with these. Um, when they get really thick, you can um, pull them out and use them just like skins and then re reuse the cups again. So I am going to start first with white. Um, I like to shake my paints when I've let them sit. Before then, it makes lots of bubbles, and some people hate bubbles. I personally like them because they add a bit of mystery to whatever you're pouring, and I like that. I like that bit of mystery. To me, that's that's part of the play in, in doing pour painting for me and doing art for me is to have that mystery. I like the mystery. Or, or I like making the mystery and making uh, seeing if other people can find it. Um, I'm going to do this in lovely lime green now, which this is um, uh, Flow Acrylics. Um, as you can see, I reuse bottles. Ow, ow, ow. Trying to get this open. Ah, this is going to be harder than I thought. Ah, did it. You just have to clap it between the bad arm and the chest and, 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 and turn. These are just old Coke bottles. Rinsed out and cleaned and made for the skin thing. So I'm going to go a little bit on the blue. I mean on the blue. On the green. And now I'm going to go do... I think I'm going to do yellow before I do blue. Yeah. I want to do yellow. Once This is an um, old water bottle. So once again, a little shake. Shake, shake, shake. And then I have to figure out how to open this with my hand all bandaged up and owie. All right, yeah, against the against the body is the way to do it. So now we're going to add some... Mm, I like yellow in this. This painting wants yellow for me for some reason. Um, we'll call this painting in honor of my nephew, whose favorite color is yellow. So, hi, Kenny, if you watch this video. <laughs> and Michelle is being weirdo again. Okay, um... And then blue. I'm gonna do this blue. Oh, gosh, I can't get this one to turn even with <clears throat> snap it against my my body. Ay ay ay. Maybe we won't do blue. <laughs> I can't get the ball out of it. <laughs> oh gosh, life is so amusing. There's no way I can grip it with the other hand. Let me find a rubber band. I usually keep a rubber band nearby for this kind of stuff. But I recently cleaned like my desk off and everything in preparation for this surgery. So of course now I don't know where anything is. Which is um pretty normal once you reach a certain age. And it's really not as old as you think it would be. Young people. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, um um, I'm going to give it one more try, and if it doesn't work, let me try and put it, like, in my elbow here. Ow, ow, ow. Ow, I can't do it with my good hand. Okay, we're going to give up on blue. Uh, it's not a silicone WD-40. I have absolutely no idea why it works so well for me. But I've been doing paintings without any kind of lubricant like this. And getting some great cells too. So but I've been experimenting with this is with different um, lubricants, and I like this WD-40. All right, this paint is the Folk Art um, Color Shift paint, blue purple flash or something like that, or violet blue flash. I made that up just for this because I definitely want to use it in this, and I need to fix my. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Well, if we can't do blue, then we must do silver. Let's see if we can do silver. <laughs> see if I can do silver. Oh, I have less faith in myself now. <laughs> I'm going to laugh and laugh and laugh about this because if I don't, it will drive me absolutely insane. Okay, I'm going to try this one more time. And I'm going to pull my shirt over here and I'm going to do my best to undo it. Oh, there's no...
Like, okay. Uh, <laughs> let's do some black. I like these colors so far. A little bit of black, not a lot, just a little bit. And I'm give it a little shake. That's enough black. I want this to be more on the white end, I think. And then since we've been using these bright colors, I'm going to use this here, which is really um, uh, considered true red, Liquitex true true red. And I'm sorry, that's pink. So we're going to put some of the pink in here. Mm, I'm going to move it all around because we're coming down the edge on this pink, end on this pink. So there we go. Since we couldn't put our silver in there, what about gold? Gold would be good. We'll use the gold. Gold. I like gold in the paintings. And then I think I'm going to put the rest of that blue shift in there. This violet blue shift that I made just for this painting. Uh -huh. I'm going to put this one here and let it drain. And it's already on my, uh, <laughs> my thing here. Let me wipe off my really dirty hands. And uh, I'm going to actually let this sit for a little bit. That's something that I like to do. Um, is to let it sit. I'm going to give it one more shot of WD-40 on the top. Not a long shot. And then I'm going to drag it this way and this way and this way. Because it's a pour, um, I like to drag. So I'm going to leave this. and I think I'm going to do a tree ring pour on this just because it's a round surface. I really, really like the idea of the flowers and the leaves in this design. So I really, really hope when this is done and we can peel it that it will look really cool with the design on the opposite side. Alright, so now here I am with my nasty hand here, carpal tunnel post-surgery, day two, not even 48 hours yet. I'm going to take this um, off of the hand right now. This is just an elastic that helps for me hold this on, and sometimes I use it like a sling as well. And then I'm going to put a glove on this hand, and we'll be ready to pour. So, instead of putting a glove on, this is actually a newspaper sleeve. Um, these work great. when and I have a hole in it here, so I have to be, be careful. I need to like seal that hole before I start using this. Um, it will cover in the shower and everything like that. Um, great if you're ever injured like I am and you can't get in the shower without, you can't get your injury wet, your surgery wet, your incision site. Um, also, you can use, you can steal those um, uh, bags in like big buildings where they're like, um, put your um, umbrella in a bag. You know, that was actually a... a, a Recommendation given to me by the hospital. Steal some umbrella bags on your way out. <laughs> I was like, okay, let me seal this hole here first so I don't have to worry about um, getting paint. And I'm just going to do that with a lighter. Um, nothing fancy, really. I'm just going to heat it up and swing it together. And then there's another hole right here. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. Big thing and then this. And amazingly enough, uh, both holes sealed. I am going to pour. Here we go with my left hand. Remember, I am right-handed. I am only going to use this lovely gloved hand here for tilting purposes today. So this is going to be a completely left hand pour by me. And I said I wanted to make it kind of like a tree ring pour. So I'm going to start right in the middle and do what you would expect to do in this situation. Should be just, oops, kind of pour slowly. I'm bad at the slow pouring thing. I am also not dead center on this. And I like to take the pour a little bit in a direction. If you've never done that before, pouring too quickly. Just 
so, so much paint in here. Here we go. Yeah, I wanted to go around there quickly, can you tell? All right, now I want to actually do another kind of um, pour around like this. A light pour. Come on. There we go. I'm actually resting my left arm on the side of um, the bin here that I have my um, pouring center in to give my left arm some more stability because I am not left-handed. Um, so it's a little awkward, but it helps keep your hand a little steadier when you're trying to do these pours. It's not going to be perfect, but art should never be perfect because perfection is not human. Um, and uh, you can't be a perfectionist and an artist at the same time um, without having some real problems. So somehow I'm down to the white here. Like I said, I'm going to pour on this side too. I'm going to pour back on this side. Woo! Sometimes I let it come out too fast. That's one of my problems with pouring. I'm too anxious to see what it's going to look like in the end, I guess. I don't know. So, I will have covered most of this canvas. Alright. I'm going to leave that as it is, and I'm going to put this right here where it can drip onto a different project. Um, I just wanted to fill all of the empty spaces, and I have a feeling that's going to be problematic at first. There we go. Okay. I want to fire this, obviously. Um, so I'm going to just hit some of these layers in here because they are dying to give me cells. Oh god, I hate the smell of that WD-40 as it comes off. Make sure you do this in a well-ventilated area if you're going to use something like WD-40, which is going to have an odor I will turn the fan on immediately when I'm done with this, so it will blow it around, and I have a air purifier which will help with it too. It's too cold today to open the windows. The smell isn't awful, it's just like um, an automotive smell to me. I like this orange that came through, and these cells up here are gorgeous. I want to hit this white. I'm going to hit over here. I'm going to give me some cells over here. Although I'm gonna, probably going to lose most of this in the tilting over here. I still would prefer it come out with the cells so that if it's something I really like and I, I can alter my tilt. Oh, it's time to... Uh, like I said, sometimes my torch does not like to be on for very long. It's an okay torch. It works, so I'm going to keep it and, until it doesn't work anymore. Alright, I think we're almost done with the torching. And uh, I'm going to let that sit for about five minutes. There's a, a fairly good close-up on it, just of the whole thing. For the next five minutes, I will fast forward through this. Um, you won't, it won't be but, you know, a couple seconds there, and you'll get to see the change if there are cells or not. And then I will come back to um, tilt this and see what we got. Go. All right, I'm going to get in here and tilt, and uh, fingers crossed. Um, that this will be a cool tilt and my lovely hand here in its plastic and in an owie state but I'm going to do my best to just use this hand as tilt and that's it. I'm going to go this way. There's so much extra on here that I'm bound to lose some cells and I'm going to try and put the extra in the middle here so that I will have a good skin on the other side. I know this looks horrible right now. And now I'm going to go back. There's just so much. There will be all new cells again. 
do not worry, there will be all new cells again. I'm going to bring this off this way. Ooh, look at that cell created in the middle there. And I'm going to stop right about the orange, and I'm going to go this way. And I'm actually kind of going to fill in over here where it didn't go through all the way. Go around and fill it again. Because it kind of almost looks like a geode that way. I'm going to go around. And fill in again by tilting out. And I'm going to go around. And I'm going to keep doing this until I get all the way around. But look at the cool design it is making here. Look at this. This, this is awesome. This is awesome. All right. Here we go. I see it coming down there. I don't want to mess too much with my thing here, so I'm going to do it like this. And then flip down. I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, but I just put some paint on there with my fingers to kind of fill in the area where there was no paint, so this paint would flow more easily. Um, and once the edges are covered, because I'm weird that way sometimes, um, I actually kind of like that. I actually kind of like that. All right, I'm going to twist it just a little bit here. I think I'm going to fold this one this way and this way. Yeah, I want to pour it this way. Next time I will zoom out. Zooming in was not the best idea while I was pouring, while I was tilting. Live and learn. I had other things on my mind with the hand. All right, now I actually want to put it this way a little bit. Yeah, the center's moving a little bit. I want to move these layers in the middle together here. good and I'm going to give it a tilt back to kind of lengthen that middle piece and I actually really like this swirl effect around the edge but I'm going to use that to get rid of some excess paint so this is where I am with the pour I think it looks pretty good I like it I'm going to fire it again if I can get my torch going yeah. All right, here we go. I like to hit the lines in between colors. That's my favorite place to fire. And around the edges, of course. But any place there's like a striation, it almost looks natural, you know, like a geode. I hit it. I just refilled it. It's not empty, so, you know, I just refilled it, like, the day before yesterday, and I haven't done anything because of the surgery. Yesterday, I sat around completely bored out of my brain, watching television without doing anything, and it was driving me nuts. Um, thankfully, I had some friends come over to keep me company, which kind of took away from the fact that I was so incredibly bored, so that was a thankful thing. But they were men, which means, you know, they were happy to be here because I can't put on or take off a bra at the moment. Um, so, you know, that meant they get to see some floppiness. I made them carry the kitty litter downstairs in exchange. <laughs> it's worth it. This is looking pretty cool, and I'm almost finished with this, I think. I'm going to hit it down here a little more. Down here a little more. Oop. My finger off. Alright, so now we're going to let this dry. Ready to see a close-up.
Woohoo! All right, so this is not dry yet, of course. This is still wet, and I am going to apologize um, for the glare. But I'm going to go in real close in a couple of these cells just so you can see them. Oh, God, this lighting is awful. Oh! Michelle needs a soft box. Okay. Um, God damn it, every time I get close. There's one that's cool. Look at that. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that's so cool. Ooh. Here's an even closer look. I think the cells look really good in here. I apologize for the glare. I'm going to have to figure out how to fix that. Yeah, so pretty. Check my Instagram for, so for when this is finally dry or when I use it for another project. Um, I will post a picture on my Instagram, which is Surviving a Creative Life, just like the name of this channel. Uh, so give it a check and I will um, show you any other projects that can happen with it. And also I'm going to try to uh, see what happens with the texture on the back. That's my true experiment today. So um, hopefully in a few days I'll be over on uh, Instagram showing you pictures of that. Because when the going gets tough, the tough know that art can save them. And art is going to save me through these surgeries even though I'm having problems with my hands. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, and um, I hope my left-handed pouring still came out well. Um, hang in there, and I'll see you again soon. Don't forget to subscribe, and give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Thanks. Bye. This is the back of the pour that you just saw. Uh, when it dried, I did pull it off. Uh, it needed a second coat of paint though, so I actually poured over this a second time over all those pretty cells. And um, this is what I came up with on the back. It did pull up that lovely pattern, so I'm going to use this to make custom pendants. Uh, not the kind that you usually see that are like square or round in the store and things like that. Um, I make them very different shapes. I can't wait to see what some of them look like. This is what I poured over all of those beautiful cells. It didn't turn out very nice at all, but this is probably my favorite part right here. But look at how the pattern pulled up. It's so pretty. I learned a lot while making these, and you definitely have to have a thick acrylic skin to be able to pull up this pattern, even though it's a very shallow pattern. On the other side, I poured primary colors. And since I knew what was going to happen, uh, that it needed to be thick, otherwise I wasn't going to get the pattern underneath, I actually poured this very thick in primary colors. And this is the top side of it. With this pour, you could really use either side. Uh, it turned out really beautifully, um, both on top and underneath with the pattern. But the pattern just makes me want to do something else with it. So here's the back side. Uh, where we're going to get in closer and see what the pattern looks like on the back side of the other side of this tin pour. And they're really bright colors and really beautiful um, little flower details and leaves and things like that. I think this was a really successful experiment. Um, I learned something new. I think I'm going to do some really fabulous things with uh, uh, these skins. Uh, I will post pictures of those on Instagram. Um, since you won't be actually seeing pictures of the other poor on Instagram.